morning, YouTube. It's 7 o'clock in the evening, right after dinner. We need to work on the dual input furnace some more. And I figure we would, uh, out of our long-term goal, which is completing the furnace, we would have a short-term goal of today of fixing errors and making so we can open it in the world in Minecraftia if that's what it's called uh, where do we start we left off at the GUI so let's get in there we left off at the GUI so let's do some stuff in here there's a couple of different things that we need to do on this background layer one is we need to set the texture um, <clears throat> We've already specified what that texture is, but now we need to actually implement it into our background layer. We, we have to make that appear, which is easy to do, which is easy to do. We're going to do that, but then we also have to uh, show how much power we have remaining, and we also have to uh, show the progress of when we're actually cooking stuff. If you want to call it cooking, I'm calling it mashing because that's what we're doing is we're mashing stuff. So let's do that. Actually, let's do this first. I did the X size, but I never did the Y size. So let's do the Y size. Y size equals 166. And I know that from memory because I've done this before. I've done this. I've done things. So GL11 dot GL color. And we're going to go with a 4F. And this is going to be 1.0 float, 1.0 float, 1.0 float, 1.0 float. Easy squeezy. Next line, we are going to type Minecraft. Oddly enough, get Minecraft. And then we're going to do a get texture manager. And in the darkness, bind them. What are we going to bind? We're going to bind texture. That's uh, that's an old... Uh, it's the black tongue of Mordor right there. Draw textured modal rect. And this is going to be GUI left. The GUI top. Top. No dash. Zero. zero and then we're gonna have X size and Y size just like we did last time exact same stuff as we did last time with our regular plain old furnace pardon my one-year-old she's apparently figured out how to scream and it's you know the coolest thing ever uh, there's a couple things that we have to do over here. We have to do the thing with the uh, power. And then we have to do the thing with the mashing. Or, you know, our progress scaled. It's uh, not there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So we did that. <clears throat> Um, with the exception of these two things, which we'll do later when we get into the tile entity, this class is actually done. It's donezo for now. Um, but we need to tune up this error. And what I believe we ended up doing was from our tile entity, we had an error. No, not our tile entity. From our container. We had an error on this line, and we said, hey, do the thing where it creates a constructor over here. We don't actually want to do that, though. We want to get rid of that. Um, so rather than, and we'll save it, so that way we break it over here again. Rather than doing this and saying create that, that, that constructor over there, we actually want to come in here and create the constructor from here. So that way we have our I inventory int, int, and int. Just like so. Um, however, there's one more thing that we want to put in here, and that is going to be entity player. And we're just going to call him player. Play on player. 
And we are not doing that. We are just going to do I inventory. Inventory. And uh, I hate these. So we'll do I J K. Bring this up here, yeah, like so. And super. We got a super. Super cool. There. And there. Voila. That's uh, pretty much where we're going to leave things right now. We save that. You'll notice we have no longer have error here. No error. That's good. We like that. We like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that shouldn't be in here. Whoops. That was me doodling ahead. I thought I had taken that stuff out. My bad. Sorry. You're like, oh, what? What is all this other shit that he's done? Nothing. Nothing. <clears throat> um. So we did that. We still got. We got an error. Oh, add an implemented method. This. This is what we should have. Yeah. Um. No errors now. Sweet. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna skip over to our block. And in the block, what we're gonna do is we're going to do our um, on block activated method. And this is more or less um, how we turn this on. So we're gonna have a public boolean on block activated and what are we having in this well we're gonna have world and world and we're gonna have int X int Y and int Z for our coordinates we are going to have entity player and player we are going to have inside and then we're going to have float hit X float hit Y and float hit Z like so um, now it's going to give us an error because we didn't put in void which means we have to return a statement well there's a couple of things that we need to do here and we are going to say that if world dot is remote we are going to return true true like so else if um, if else if player is not sneaking Like so. Um, so what are we doing here? This is essentially allows the player to be able to hold down shift and place a block on the block. So you can be in the Minecraft world, right? And you can have your crosshairs over an item that has a GUI that opens up. And you can hold down shift and you can place a block on top of it, right? That's pretty much what this means. That's how we, how can we click this with nothing happening? How can we, how can we right click on it so that way the GUI doesn't open and we can do that by sneaking. So that's what we're putting in there. We're being sneaky, sneaky, sir. Sneaky, sneaky. Um, and when we do this, we want to activate our tile entity. Ingot masher. And we're going to go out and we're going to get some things. Um, but really, uh, what we're going to do and uh, is is we need to get this tile entity to assign it as we're opening this up and I'll show you kind of what happens here because I, I don't think I did a good a good job of explaining this we're gonna cast this tile entity ingot masher masher um, world dot get tile entity and we're going to do it on the X we're going to do it on the Y we're going to do it on the Z just like so so we're going to go out and we're going to get the tile entity for that 
you with me so far? We're going to do um, if entity does not equal null. Oh, I don't like that. I always like a ugh, balls. I always like a space between these. I don't know why. It's a like a, a just a, a that's just a Neil coding practice there. We're gonna say um, FML not fuck my life, but for Jamod loader network handler, and we're going to open GUI, and we're gonna have a player. What's our mod? Well, we need to actually reference our instance. Mm -hmm. Which is going to be neocraft dot dot instance. Come on, thing. Instance. What's our GUI ID? Well, we already created that. Did we create that? Holy crap! I don't know. I'm thinking we did. I'm thinking we did. God, I hope we did. GUID ingot masher. Yeah, I'm going to check that. And then world X, Y, and Z. And then we will da, 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 return true. Like so. However, however, else, what do we got to do? We got to return false. Like so. So that's done. Boom. Boom. That's done. So what's happening here? We right click on the block. We go out and we get the tile entity for this. And then we're jumping out to our GUI handler. So our GUI handler is right here. That's not it, you goofy son of a bitch. GUI handler is going to say, oh, neocraft dot that. So if the, if the entity isn't null, right, we're going to grab entity, which is that, and we're going to pull up a new container, the ingot masher, and it's going to have an inventory and it's going to reference this tile entity. Right? That's pretty much what happens. Jumps out, does that. <clears throat> There's some certain things that we need to do in our tile entity. Because what we can actually do this right now, right? And forgive me, I know it's been a few days. If I did not put this in in the last uh, episode... Because um, I kind of had to work ahead a little bit to kind of outline where we were going to go and how this was how I was going to do each piece. Uh, pause it right here and copy, or not copy, but write in this section. And remember that this is server side up here, so we we reference the container. And then write in this section, and remember down here, uh, this is client side, client GUI element. So we're going to be doing GUI ingot masher. So put that in real fast. Pause it. Put that in real fast. Okay, glad you're back. Um, we're going to save this. <clears throat> now, what I kind of want to do here is uh, get away from programming for a second and kind of talking about troubleshooting. Because one of the most common things that I get uh, comments and questions on is, hey, I've built all my shit. I right-click on it and nothing happens. It's just, it's just a block. I'm like right-clicking on up wood planks here what's going on and I'm going to kind of show you the way um, that you can troubleshoot that because we're going to roll in here we got our ingot masher I'm sick of being up here we're going to jump down into the sunshine next to the water toes in the sand we right click on it nothing happens well why isn't anything happening we have it in our GUI handler we have our method to open it what we need to do is kind of find a paper trail so when we activate this, we go out to this class and we say, let's get the tile entity. Right? Let's get that. Well, when we actually come and look at our tile entity, it's empty. We, I mean, we did a little bit up here when we created our slots, but more or less this thing is empty. But specifically, there's this. See this? Is usable by player. What is this telling us? It's saying, no, fuck no, you can't use this. Go away. Right? We actually need to fill some of that stuff out. 
There are also some other cases where we've referenced these specifically in our container class, not our container class, in our GUI class. We've said, hey, let's go out to ingot masher. Ingot masher actually equals this tile entity, and let's reference this class or this method right here has custom inventory name and get inventory name and uh, get inventory name again right here. But what's going to happen is it's going to go out and it's going to try to get those. It's going to be like, where is it? Right here, these two. It's going to be like, herp derp, return nothing. Return false. Does it have it? Nope, it doesn't. Hey, what's this? Nothing. So we have to do that. All right, so kind of follow the paper trail here. We know that we need to have stuff for our tile entity. We got to have that shit worked out. And then, again, we have to reference this in our GUI handler, do we have our ingot masher in place, right? Our GUI for our ingot masher. We get over to our GUI. First thing that it's doing is it's pulling up the container. Do we have that worked out, right? So kind of fo follow the trail of, of what you're doing when you right click on that. I know it doesn't seem like a lot is going on. You just right click on it, boom, there it is. But that's why we go ahead and we right click on it, nothing happens. So, um, let's get into this tile entity and let's actually let everybody know, say, hey, yes, you can use me. You can do it. You can do it. Um, what does this method look like? This is a big one. And if you remember me, it took me like half an hour to type this out in the last tutorial. So what are we going to say? We're going to say if... Um, um we yeah, we got to we got to do some stuff first. We sure do. We sure do. Um we are going to come up here and we need a string. And we're going to say uh this can be private, can't it? Yeah. Private cuz we're not using it anywhere else. Private string um, you know, custom name. We'll come back to that later. Yes, yes, yes. You want a return statement. So, um, is usable by player. What we're going to do is click on the right method, and we are going to say if world object. dot get tile entity and we are going to have x chord y chord and z chord does not equal this as in this entity this tile entity we are going to return false. Otherwise, what are we going to do? We are going to return and we would put var1 here, but I freaking hate that. I freaking hate entity player. Um, so it's just going to be player. We are going to return player dot get distance squared. We're going to cast this as a double to start off with. Double. And when we do this, it always takes us to the very end. I hate that. Cast that as a double. And actually, we need to cast all of these a double. So let's do this. Let's do the first one. And this is going to be x chord plus half a double. Half a double. And we're going to do it like this. See chord plus half a double. This is going to be Y chord plus half a double. And this is going to be your Z chord plus half a double. But what we were going to do is we're actually going to cast each of these as a double. So we'll just paste that in like so. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to have less than or equal to 64. Close that up just like that. 
So now this tile entity is usable. Hey, we're getting the tile entity at our X chord, our Y chord, and Z chord. This is where that's at, and it's passing it back over to here when this happens. Get the tile entity. What's the X, Y, and Z? Oh, I can provide you with the X, Y, and Z right here. Boom, boom, boom. Sweet, huh? Um, there's a couple other things that we need to do here, and that is the get inventory name and the has custom inventory name. Because we reference those here, here, when we're actually putting in our name, right? When we're writing out the name of what this bad boy is. So, um... Hmm. I'm thinking out loud here. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Has custom inventory name. We are going to return this dot custom name is not equal to null and this dot custom name dot len or length sorry I'm thinking I'm thinking dot net there um, zero like so um, get inventory name well our inventory name we are going to return container dot ingot masher and you know what there is one thing that I did this actually needs to be in quotes my bad um, there is one thing that I did um, now that I think about it that I didn't take out and that is over here um, scrolling down to about right here I put this in we registered the tile entity so game registry register tile entity tile entity ingot masher dot class comma ingot masher just like so and actually you know what let me Sorry, just thinking out loud there. Uh, delete key, new keyboard. Trying to figure out where everything's at. So go ahead and put that in. Back to our tile entity. Um, I think we've got that, but I think there's one more thing that we need. And that is one that is not in here already. And that is going to be, uh, we'll just put it right below this. Um, we are going to say public void set custom name. And we're going to be using a string name. like so and we are going to uh, it's void so we're not returning anything we're just going to say this dot custom name is going to equal name like so let me do an override on that just to make sure that it likes it it does not like it hmm hmm all right uh, we'll take that out. Maybe I'm, I I updated this from 164, so I think I might be just mixing up 164 and 172 at this point. Um, we've done that. Let's run this bad boy and see what we come up with. Do we have errors? Do we have otherwise?
All right, there it is. Right click on it. Nothing happens. No joy. Well, what are we missing? What are we missing, folks? Hmm. You putting it down and doing that doesn't work. It's not returning an error. Well, let's take a peek. You know what? There's something that I just feel like is not right here. And I want to look. Let's look at this tile entity just does not feel right to me. Let's look at that's what we did. Has custom inventory name. Localized name, which would be custom name. Set GUI display name. That's what we were doing. Um, set GUI display name. Still doesn't like that. Set GUI display name. What do we have over here? I'm crazy. I don't know. I don't know. What we are going to do, however, is we are going to just copy this line out of here and we are going to paste it into our get inventory name and localized name would actually be custom name like so but for some reason this isn't working it doesn't like that and I put it in our tile entity Get display name. Hmm. Who knows? Let's get back to diagnosing why this bad boy won't load up. Um, so our container. Oh, can't interact with. We should probably do that, huh? Uh, we are going to return not dot masher dot is usable by player and what do we choose for our player? We're going to put in player because even though it doesn't say player there, we're going to make that say player there. Control S semicolon. Let's give it a try now. Go away and come back fingers crossed nothing no love no love why won't you work you make me angry you make me angry hmm i'm going to have to research I will be right back. And I'm back. God, that was fast. That only took like a second. And boom, here I am again. Amazing, huh?
Um, tile entity. Tile entity. I don't want that tile entity. I want this tile entity. What else do we have here? Do, 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 do. Get rid of you. We don't need you. Go away. Um, tile entities. Tile entity, tile entity. We've never told this ingot masher where to go to get the tile entity. We're like, tile entity? Are you kidding me? We don't need to create a tile entity. Of course we have to create a tile entity. We have to do a tile entity. Ingot masher. And it's a method, so put in your, your thingies there. Your parentheticals. And it's got to be a new one. Like so. Let's save that. Let's jump in. See what it looks like. All right. Deep breath. Do we need to say any like magic words? Mecha like a high, mecha high me ho. And right click. Aha! Look at that. And that looks like shit. This container dot alabaster oven thing. This isn't an alabaster oven. Did I do that? Did I do that? I think I did, didn't I? Son of a bitch. I did. Um, this actually needs to be container. Um, ingot masher. We're going to copy this, and we're going to go to our resources. Um, I can't remember his name. I can see his picture. Um, he taught me how to do this. We are going to write next to it. Container dot ingot masher dot name is going to equal ingot masher, and this should do it. Nope, it sure didn't. Shorten it up a little bit so it's my, my full sign is not there anymore. Or it's actually still there. Uh, but we could probably squeeze these together a little bit. What do you think? We probably should probably like not make them be, you know, sitting underneath that. Can we put stuff in? Nope. 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 Haven't configured any of that yet, which we'll do in our container class. But we got it open. I'm going to work this out. I'm going to go back and look at those YouTube comments. So we got it up. We got it running. We did quite a bit today. I'm actually going to sign off and just do another episode immediately. I'm going to get this one started rendering, get it uploaded, so that way you guys have something to go with, and then I'm going to record another one as soon as that's done rendering. So lots of love. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you soon. This is Neil. I'm out.